This video you're about to see is um, a video of how I resurrected my um, Hamilton Beach uh, espresso uh, coffee maker. It uh, hasn't been used in many, many years and um, uh, took me about two days to bring it back to life. And this video is dedicated to a friend of mine out in Seattle um, who is sadly no longer with us, but nevertheless, Cheers. Hello. Um, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, and um, I was just uh, making some coffee. And then after I made a batch of coffee, I thought that um, it's been quite a while since I um, made espresso. And I have this espresso machine here that you can see that um, I bought probably a long time ago. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like 2008, 2010, I, I can't remember. Um, it was from Target and I bought this because a friend of mine who loves coffee and espressos um, told me about this and I thought this would be a great machine to have. Um, it's it's a small machine, but, but you, as you can see, I just pulled it out of storage and cleaned it up a little bit. It has a little water base, water uh, reservoir, and then there's a, it hooks up to a pump there inside. And then you can turn this on to uh, heat up the boiler or the heater element inside. And then once you turn it on, let's see, I think you turn this on and then you hit, you wait for a while for the heater element to get up to temperature and then you hit this brew button to start pushing the water through the system and heats up through here and then pushes it out down over there now since i just pulled this out of storage for it's been quite a while i don't know how well it's going to work and i think I last time when i ran the system i'm not sure if the water came through so what i'm going to do is try to see if um if it works so that is um today's um plan to see if it works again since um it hasn't been run in quite a few years and as you can see here there's a little steam froster or milk for steaming milk and it's got all kinds of all kinds of implements here we go I think this goes in like that for steaming the milk and um, you know, the usual stuff so I think what I'll do is uh, take it for a quick operation run and see how well it works so let's give it a try I'm just gonna plug this in and then see how she works oh she's on already so you can see it was on and it's turning on the heating element right there and then let's see if it'll just push out some water and just see if it runs probably gonna I deliberately did not put this on there so I can see the water just comes out all right so we're basically hearing the pump run but it looks like something's clogged so I guess um, I'm gonna have to check it out to see uh, if, if we're gonna have to uh, I'm gonna try to disassemble that and see if there's any reason why nothing is coming out of there I could hear a little bit of noise behind there but we may have to uh, take that apart and see what's wrong so um, stay tuned end of part one okay so um, just a little addendum on the checkup I'm leaving the machine on 
and while there's still no water coming out of the brewing cycle my steamer is definitely working over there I don't want to, so I want to put this here so it doesn't destroy the counter but it looks like the steamer the heater element is working well so uh, that's a that's a good thing there so we'll take it from there okay I'm um, adding a little bit um, so what I'm going what I wanted to do is take this assembly off but the problem is that you can see the length of this is not very the, the the width here is not really wide so I'm having trouble getting the screwdriver in there to apply leverage and um, what I really want to do is use some sort of a socket um, socket connector with a wrench to um, to turn that and since um, it's Sunday and I can't really um, the auto parts stores are not open I can't get a little um, a flat headed screw with the little socket adapter to go in there so um, looks like I'm gonna have to try to um, adapt so what I'm gonna do is trying to I took a, a can lid and I cut a piece I cut a piece of the foil I cut a piece of the can and then I folded it over about two or three times to um, to make a little basically a screwdriver tip that I'm gonna try to fit in there like that and then what I have to do then is um, where is it I'm gonna see if I can try to bend this and then just put it in there so I could kind of drive it with the with the socket so I'll be right back okay so this is a follow-up I'm trying to get that loose right there and I originally made a a little flathead um, screw to fit in there like that and then use use a socket driver to try to get that off but um, it wasn't working too well so I went out and I see if I can find another what I can find in a toolbox and I found a little itty bitty screwdriver so it it'll fit but it's a bit it's a bit loose because this isn't as wide so I'm having difficulty taking this off so what I may end up having to do is to have to disassemble this to get maybe to to I'm hoping that I don't have to do it to to take this out of there so I can get this out to clean it but for now that's what I'm thinking about okay um, the, the bottom there does not really want to come out so what I'm gonna have to do is to take the top apart so the way um, from what I seen from uh, Vl Vladimir's video um, is that there are actually two screws here and instead of trying to pry this open what I'm going to do first is you use um, a sharp um, instrument of some kind and then what you do is you take it and you go like that and you pry out this little this little cover right there plastic cover right there and what you will see is under here and here there are two very small um, Phillips screwdrivers I mean uh, Phillips screws that I'm gonna go ahead and try to take out and then I should be able to just slowly pull this top piece apart so I'll be right back okay so the problem is if you look um, over here the screws that they use, I don't know if you can see it all that well, but basically it's a triangular head. Um, it's a triangular head and um, no amount of a normal screw driver 
can take it out. So, uh, let's see, here we go. I can't really focus all that well with this, so let me try zooming. Well, anyways, sorry about that. So basically what I'm going to try to do instead is um, I'm going to try to see if I can take a pocket knife in there. I'm going to try to take a pocket knife in there and just cut out the perimeter of where the this top piece of cover attaches to the body. And then we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm trying to save this top from being completely destroyed. So what I'm gonna do is give you a tip for those of you who are trying to do as much as you can to save this. So what you need to do is first I'm gonna tell you, when you take your flat tip screwdriver like that, you put it, what you have to do is you can't pry it in this you can't pry it in this way but what you have to do is just slide your screwdriver in like this and pry it up like that and then you go around here and then you see there is um, another tab right there so when you come around be be a bit careful here so you don't break that tab here as you pry it, go like that and then the other thing that I found really helpful is when you come around to the back end here, what you do is you take your screwdriver and you push in and you push up and you try to jam it just so it keeps a little bit of force pushing this lid up. And once you do that, um, it may take a while, but you can start taking your screwdriver and push it in there. And then because this is pushing up, you can try to use the force, applying force up here, and turn it counterclockwise to get this, bust this screw loose. And also, with the force of this pushing up, it'll actually um, somehow break that joint, um, uh, break that tight joint. So you can get you can get this screw out, and then this way, you won't um, destroy this top. And and I don't know if you can see it there, but I think I got. This, you can see it. I can turn it now. Now I've gotten it completely loose. Now I just have to uh, stick a magnet or something um, in there and get it out. And then I'm going to try to do the same thing for this other one. And then I should be able to just remove this top. I'll clean you off without uh, breaking any of the breaking or bending the plastic. Okay, so um, success. Um, I was able to take this unit out. Um, if you look over here, um, I was able to get the screw just loose and basically off these two units right there. So basically what you have is you have this top piece off cleanly and without uh, doing any damage. I'll flip this over to let you see where all the tabs are. You'll see there's one there on the side. A little pin there and then there's two up front one two and then coming around again um, so this is nice um, not doing any damage to the uh, the top so so all you have to do is when once you're finished you can go ahead and um, discard those two um, screws and um, put some machine screws um about that length there and um put the top back on so now that we have this open we'll go ahead and take a quick tour um from um vladimir's uh, previous youtube video you'll see that um the water supply from the bottom of the plastic tray comes in there and my motor is working okay so i'm not going to touch that um and it kind of it, it pumps this up and then through this white tube goes to the bottom over there into the heating element and then 
um, looks like that's just a steam return of some kind and then it'll go out through the bottom or it'll come up here through your steam valve um, down under and down in there to the bottom and come out over there so so if we look at this all the wiring is pretty well labeled well if I put some labels on them I should be able to take this apart um, it looks pretty serviceable um, I mean for someone who's handy not not for someone who doesn't know what they're doing so we're going to see if we can try to take that apart right there if you look it's doable um, so we'll give that a try and um, that is the next challenge is to take this um, all the wiring off and then disassemble the um, heater element from the chassis itself and then take the bottom off and then see if we can go ahead and clean that out oh hi good morning um, this is uh, actually day two um, I had um, the top of this opened up uh, yesterday and um, as I stated before um, when I'm trying to clean this out I ha I'm trying to take this piece out um, so that I can um, clean out under the sediments or maybe a hard water which I, I won't know until I get this off but the problem is the distance here is um, too short for me to get a flat headed screwdriver in so there's two ways of going about this I can you know invert this you know uh, regular side up and take out, take out all the the screws and bolts or whatnot that's mounting this thing to that chassis plate that you saw before or I've thought of um, overnight as I was thinking about this I think what I'm going to do is just cut a small square a hole right here so that I can put the uh, screwdriver in through this hole and get go to that um, that screw there and try to bust it loose and the reason that I realized that cosmetically it's not really going to be that big of a deal cutting a, a little piece of plastic hole right there is that um, this thing actually has a drip tray like that a drip tray so that when it's you know regular side up you could put the drip tray in there and there's it catches the water right there so no water would actually uh, flow through it and in the future if I need to take this if I need to take this off again to do cleaning um, it would actually make things easier so that's what I'm going to do right now is just cut a little piece of the plastic out from this underside here on the the plastic molding and um, take it from there okay this is just a quick short one I'm still having trouble with that bolt right there and it's really really tight and I have un been unable to get to it so what I've tried now is to fill the reservoir here with water in in combination with some distilled vinegar and um, I'm running it through the system and I'm hoping that that will dissolve some of the deposits either lime deposits or something and it seems to be working a little bit because now I'm starting to see just slight drips up there and I'm hoping that there will be enough deposits that will be melted that I can just let the steam take it out so we'll see what happens next okay I'm trying something new I, I'm I don't know if it's advisable but I tip my machine upside down after running the water vinegar cycle through a little bit and it's still not quite getting there so, so 
what I've done originally just pour a little bit of the um, the vinegar in there just thinking that I would let it soak and then I guess you know when there's desperation you just go ahead and turn the machine on but you got to be careful you don't turn the steam valve open so or the steam or hot stuff will come out of there so but right now I let the machine on a little bit and I'm hoping that the um, the vinegar would just kind of boil on that plate and maybe somehow it will soak in there and um, decalcify what's under there because right now I'm having a heck of a time getting that uh, that screw to come loose and I'm hoping that you know I mean everything I'm doing right now is trying to uh, dissolve the calcification and I'm hoping that it works so stay tuned okay um, just a quick update um, it looks like it is sort of working uh, as you've seen before I've tilted the unit upside down and I actually turned the um, the heater element on and pour vinegar right on top and, and my attempt there is to try to let the vinegar soaked in into this element here so it can kind of decalcify if you will and then now if you look over here coming out of the steam steam valve well I have it off now but you can see that there's some you can see that over there on the bottom there's some decalcification stuff um, because using the uh, vinegar to uh, dissolve uh, whatever you know the hard water stuff it's probably calcium lime whatever it is okay so so this is this is interesting um, I'm gonna warn you one this unit is not designed to be inverted upside down and turned on and I actually um, I think what happened was I actually had a um, I if you look over here I actually had this valve here one second I had this rubber hose on one second please I had this rubber hose fitting right there where it connects to the this the steamer I actually had that popped off and I did reconnected it and and filled up the water reservoir and turned it on and in attempt to run the uh, the the heater element and let whatever was decalcify out here and what I I'm going to tell you that um, you have to be careful because whatever gets dislodged comes out of the steam valve and I actually had to do this it did actually clog uh, it came down here and clogged it and it clogged it in such a way well after I put the um, after I put that um, hose back on it actually um, the claw came down to here and it actually created a, a, what I what you know a, a balloon like you know in medical term they'll call it aneurysm but so I turned it off this machine and I took a, a needle but you have to be really careful doing this and what I did was I stuck it in here to dislodge whatever it was and it poof it came out but you got to be careful doing this so you don't get burned with uh, either hot water or steam and while we're going over safety protocols um, I might as well tell you that all this time I've been working here at my in my kitchen with a um, a grounded uh, uh, what they call them um, a protected circuit so if something if there's too much current draw this thing the circuit will trip and the power is out, out of this outlet and it's also convenient to work by the sink because all this stuff you just want to pour and get rid of and it's absolutely much easier to uh, do so when you're right at the sink so that's it I'm gonna continue to try to decalcify and um, I'll be back in a bit okay good news 
Um, after a few cycles of the, this de decalcification, um, I inverted it back and I fill the reservoir with um, about 50-50 water and uh, vinegar. And um, I just turn, here, let me just put a little more vinegar in there. So I turn the machine on and lo and behold, the water is starting to come out of here. So that means um, the decalcification has started to uh, get to a point where it's starting to work. So I'll go ahead and show you that. You can see that there is definitely um, a potential now for the, the brewing process to, to take place before it was just nothing was coming out of there. So I'm really happy about this. I'm going to let this run and um, empty out this water and I'll be right back. Wow, look at this. Look at this steamer, it's working pretty well. Well, looks like this steamer is working pretty well. Looks like the repair has made everything work a lot better than I expected it would. Uh, I think that's going to steam a nice cup of milk very nicely. Look at that. That is amazing. Okay, so we have the unit on and I think we've run through some water um, to clean out um, the espresso maker and now um, now that everything seems to be fixed it's working a lot better you can let's see we can um, see the steamer here you can see that is a pretty decent amount of steam going there and I'm really quite pleased that um, the steamer is actually working really really well like that I mean it was not working anywhere like that before so I'm quite pleased with that so I think we restored this unit to working condition as you can see once you turn the button on on the power um, the unit should heat up uh, probably 10 15 20 minutes or however long it takes um, this light should go off to tell you that there's sufficient heat oh there it goes see so just turned on there's sufficient heat in this unit um, to uh, to brew your espresso or to steam your milk etc and um, I just tested this um, a minute ago so it may um, it may um, take a minute or so to uh, to finish uh, heating up um, I think this little steamer light is supposed to come on but it's not coming on but it's really in the scheme of things there now as you can see this light is off means our heating element is plenty hot and you can see there's actually steam coming out of this which is really nice and then you can um, go ahead I'm going to test it And that is really nice for steaming milk, I think. I think that's going to work really nicely. So, uh, we'll turn this off. And as you can see, it's still going quite nicely. And then I'm going to test this out soon, but we should be, it should be able to breast, brew a, a cup of espresso pretty nicely. Now, let's see. That's a nice amount of steam there. Oh yeah, I think that'll work really nicely. So, I think that's it. Um, it's been a bit of a tribulation, but I'm glad that it, it worked and it's all worth it. Um, but 
again, if you have one of these and you're contemplating servicing it uh, first, always remember that you're working around electrical stuff. Um, there's a possibility of electrocution if you don't know what you're doing. So always work around a, a, a ground fault protected circuit um, near a sink where you can dump out all this stuff as you're testing it out. And, um, oh, yes. Um, as you can see, I end up using probably whew, a third bottle of vinegar cleaning it all out. Um, I don't know if that amount was necessary, but in the end, um, I had it. I had a bottle handy, and that was just worth it. And um, we're gonna have to uh, try it and see uh, how this works out. So that's it. I hope um, you can get your machine working. And I have a few more, few more things to do. Putting, putting the lid back on. So I, I have a few more things to do. Putting the lid back on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think operationally, this machine is uh, ready to work. Uh, I hope that helps you. Oh, and at the end, I never managed to get. I meant never managed to get that off, um, no matter how I try. So that's how I end up um, turning this unit over and trying the decalcification many, many times. But thank goodness it worked. And I guess at the end, it wasn't um, horrifically super calcified because I thought I've always tried to take good care of this machine. Um, but now that I know what I need to do, it should, uh, I should be able to keep it uh, healthy and running for quite a long time. So that's it. See you later. Okay, so um, I ground out uh, uh, one cup serving and um, I'm going to go ahead and um, make, make this cup and then let's see how she works. So it's about a shot. I'll take her out. Let's see. Ah, oh, sorry, drop the camera. Um, so there we have it. One, one shot of espresso. looks decent but I, ha I have to get out the um, other coffee and see if it, it looks better so that's it it, it looks like it's working well I, I won't go ahead and use the steam milk stuff but um, I think that'll work just fine so until then bye bye okay so I had a sample of this and oh my gosh is it strong oh my gosh 
Woo! It is good stuff. I I had forgotten um what this tastes like because it's been it's been literally years and years since uh, I've used this machine. As you can see, that is just um what is just continue to drip from um, after I turn the machine off. So that I mean even that is strong coffee and this is this is really potent and it's good and um, I just wanted to say that I am really glad I fixed it and um, um, to close up this uh, video I'm just going to do a toast to a dear friend of mine of course from Seattle whom we all miss and um, cheers my friend we miss you bye